Hello everyone! Monster High was a big part of my childhood, arguably the main reason why I started to like dolls and toys as an art form. Uh, back then they were something really unique and very stylish and since then it has been rebooted two times to very degrees of success. Um, right now we are on Monster High G3 and although many uh, criticize the new designs of our favorite ghouls, Commenting about the fact that the new fashion style isn't as bold or dark as it used to be, I actually really like the new designs because I feel like they were able to design them for the new generation with the newest trends as well as the main characters' ages in mind. Plus, there is a much wider range of body types to the point where everyone of every size can feel included, which I have to say, I wish things were like that when I was a kid because I feel like I wouldn't have been so critical of my own body if things like chubby dolls and chubby characters were as accepted and commonplace as they are today. So today, let's take three characters and turn them into magical girls. And yes, this video was supposed to come out before Halloween, but I got really busy and I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like the first designs I came up with, so I I had to redo this whole video. <laughs> but now, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's start with Draculara. I think Draculara was one of my favorites as a kid. I don't think she was ever my absolute favorite, but she was really up there. She was probably my second Monster High, and I really, really liked the doll. G3 Draculara is also really cute. I really love how they leaned in on the different body types of modern Monster High. If you were to look back to the original webisodes, you'd notice that Dracula has always been shorter than the other girls, but the dolls never really reflected that. Now, Dracula is not only shorter than most dolls, she's also chubbier, which I absolutely love. Of the G3 dolls that I've seen so far, she's probably my favorite. Regardless of her version, Dracula's fashion sense has always been very cute, very frilly, very pink, so she's the perfect character to turn into a magical girl. So when I was designing Dracula as a magical girl, I tried my best to combine aspects of both, of both G1 and G3. I combined their hairstyles and gave her a really cute half, half up, half down pigtail hairstyle with bright pink bows and really long hair. Both hairstyles have pink accents, so I gave her light pink tips and dark purplish roots. I love chubby Dracula, so I kept that. I gave her a rounder and softer face shape to reflect that and also to reflect the sweet personality that I remember from G1 Dracula. When it comes to her outfit, I gave her a puffy dress with golden bats dangling on the seams with bloomers underneath, a short lace coat with bat details and a big bright pink bow on her neck, the tails of which are shaped like bat wings. I also drew a close-up of her face on the right where she is holding her umbrella because I believe that if Dracula was a magical girl, she would have her umbrella as a weapon. Overall, I really love this design, especially the golden bats dangling off her dress, but it doesn't really feel like Dracula. I feel like if I had given her twin tails, that would have been fixed, maybe, but I still really like the design nonetheless. Next up, we have the OG main character, Frankie Stein. Frankie was one of my favorite dolls. She was literally my first Monster High and I cherished her even when I accidentally pulled her head out when brushing her hair and broke her neck piece, dooming her to a life of not having a neck and being unable to move her head. I was, as you can imagine, distraught. Um, Frankie, as of G3, is the first non-binary Monster High character and I believe everyone took this change very well. I was actually impressed. I was afraid people would be rude about it, but thankfully everyone I've seen thus far has been very kind about it and has referred to them by their new pronouns. That might be because this actually makes a lot of sense with Frankie's character, being that they're canonically 16 days old and still have a ton to learn about themselves and they would feel more comfortable if they don't adhere to the rigid binary labels. When turning Frankie into a magical guardian, I tried to mesh elements of both OG and G3 Frankie once more. I gave them back their signature green skin, pinstriped black and white hair and I kept their new and really cool prosthetic leg. Their outfit is made of a blue corset with a silver rim 
and two cyan bolt dangling off the tips, a pinstriped skirt and a short blue puffy sleeve jacket and a tie that I combined with a bow, just like I did with my character Miyuki. I also tied her hair in a long ponytail with a blue bow pinned down with a giant cyan thunderbolt and ornament. I also gave them big bright and shiny gloves because I absolutely love when superheroes have giant gloves. I don't know why, I just find it really cool. I really like this design as well, but does it feel like Frankie? Y you'll be the judge of that. And finally, let's end this roster with Laguna Blue. Now, uh, this one is going to look different from the other two designs. The reality is that I redid this video because the first batch of designs were not like I wanted them to be, so I had to restart. And then I made Frankie and Draculara back to back, and then I just entered digital art burnout hell. I needed to take a break. Laguna was not in the original video, I added her last minute. So once I got back, I just really wanted to do Laguna in a lineless art style, and so I did. So yeah, that's why she looks different. Um, moving on, I also really like Laguna. At some point she became my favorite. In G3 she looks really different. She's... well... she's pink now. And you know, I don't dislike her new design. I think she's really cute. She just doesn't feel like the Laguna I grew up with. So when designing Laguna as a magical girl, mostly I mostly based her on her original design. The only elements I kept from G3 is her ponytail, the hair parting in the middle, her pearl hair pins and her sharp teeth. I really like her sharp teeth. Uh, when I drew her lashes, I drew them very spiky, but they also curl a little, so they kind of look like webbing. A very small detail, but uh, a cool one, I think. I always try to give a lot of thought to the character's high shapes. When it comes to her outfit, I gave her a sailor uniform top for obvious reasons and I gave her a towel tied up in a big bow as her skirt. Uh, don't worry, she uses shorts under the skirt. I also gave her really tall platform sandals. I don't think this design is the best. It definitely needed some revisions. Um, I still like some elements, but uh, like I said, it could definitely use some more iterations until I settled on a design. But I already spent so long on this video, and for the purposes of this video, it works. So I'm keeping it as is. I'm open to the idea of doing this again with other characters, so feel free to leave your favorite characters in the comments if you're interested in a part 2. Also, if you'd like to see Magical Girl versions of characters from other series, feel free to comment them down below. And with that being said, we got to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching! Consider leaving a like and subscribing and until next time, bye!